Ahoy and welcome. I am Lee the Pirate Tester and welcome to the latest episode of Testing Tales where normally I speak with other testers. Today I am with Bob Salmon who admits he is not a tester. Welcome Bob. Hello, thank you very much for having me. Yes, even though I'm not a tester, I feel like I've been uh, given special dispensation to come on Testing Tales. So thank you very much for having me. Quite right. It's like this isn't exclusively for testers and in this recording we'll get into your connection with testers and how it's deeper than it may seem with other developers which is going to be good so first of all would you like to introduce yourself to the audience hello again everyone i'm bob i live in the uk i've been working in software professionally for a long time since the year started with a one uh, just leave it at that. And over my career, I've mostly been a programmer, but also team leader of a team of programmers, systems analyst, and architect. I'm, I'm currently a programmer again. A fair few things, but most importantly, not a tester. Not a tester, no. Now, you have a blog where you report various things, and there was a uh, blog piece that you wrote that we talked about before the recording where you state you aren't a tester but appreciate testers and testing and you go into all sorts of bits and pieces which oh in the cliched youtube thing there will be a link in the description somewhere in what way do you see yourself appreciate testers and testing especially compared to some how some of your peers might see testers i'm aware i'm generalizing here and that's often dangerous so you know there are good and bad testers, just as there are good and bad programmers. So, you no, know, please take that as read. I think one of the things that I have learned since leaving university, so I did a computer science degree, so in theory, that set me up for my career as a programmer. But one of the things that I've learned since leaving university is the stuff that isn't just the algorithms and the uh, database theory and all that stuff it's been going sideways from programming to user experience, uh, testing, management, sales, all that other stuff that surrounds programming in the real commercial world. Okay. Um, and I'm and guessing so, in your degree, testing didn't come up much, if at all. I don't. I never did a CS degree, but I heard it doesn't really come up. It didn't back then. I hope it has since, but... Um, no, I guess it's one of the things that could separate out someone who's just started in programming and is now a junior developer to you know that in theory they already know all the algorithm stuff. But so, what is it that you should aim for as you grow as a programmer to help you get promoted to the next levels? And one of the things is seeing outside your cubicle. Mm -hmm. Um, to the kinds of people around you. And so one thing we were discussing earlier that, that uh, before we recorded, a knee-jerk reaction that programmers can have is, I would have shipped this yesterday if it weren't for you pesky testers raising bugs. Never heard that. No, <laughs> never heard that. No, no. no. And, and there is a side issue which we can get into if you'd like about should testers be gatekeepers that are the ones who are actually holding stuff up. I don't think so, but whatever. But that adversarial relationship between programmers and testers that can easily develop, mm -hmm. I've, I've seen it. A way that it might help programmers overcome that is um, if you as a relatively junior programmer, you're pairing or, or having a code review with someone more senior than you, and that more senior person says, oh, I'm sorry, you, no, you, you can't leave it like that. You need to fix that before we can ship it. And, and you know, that's particularly the case in something like a request of a pull request, uh, sorry, a review of a pull request where you can have, you know, a list of this is wrong, this is wrong. Do you say to that senior developer, I could have shipped this yesterday if it hadn't been for you <laughs> raising all these comments on my pull request? You know, it, it's the same intent. Yes. The software is in the state you've produced it. We could ship it like that, but it would be better if it didn't get shipped like that because of these reasons. And those reasons can be found by someone, you know, with 
a job title you're aspiring to or by a tester. It's basically the same thing. They are not the enemy. They are your helper. Yes. It may sting a little at the time and it can be presented poorly as well as well. But when I review, I always keep in mind the kind of um, sports analogy of you go for the ball and not the player. Mm. You don't say you're rubbish. You say that code's rubbish in yes. a polite, friendly way. Yeah. To, yeah. to help you break break this link, you don't see it as your baby that's precious and perfectly formed. Pointing out flaws in it is pointing out flaws in you. Yeah, it's having to distance the person from the product. I'm not attacking yeah. your person. I'm attacking the thing you made. Because even great people can have a bad day. Oh, absolutely. And and you know, I'm so so grateful to. Oh yeah, stupid me. I forgot. Blah blah blah. Or I that isn't consistent with that. Or yeah, I just messed up. I have had the privilege of working with some decent testers in in my time, and they do their job better than I could do their job. <laughs> but I imagine they feel the same way the other way around. Like people go, oh, like I write I write some SQL, and people go, oh, have you ever wanted to be a developer? I'm like, they they can they can do the coding bit much better than me. I'd see it as a means to an end, but I can then test way better than they could. That's why we have different jobs. But I, I think, I think this touches on an important thing. So I, I've had this long-standing interest in, in quality and testing as a part, but not all of that. Um, but I've only relatively recently come to the testing community, things like Ministry of Testing. Mm -hmm. I happen to be at college with James Thomas. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, we... Uh, lost touch with each other and then reunited many years later on LinkedIn and then he posted something about ministry of testing. So I found it less than five years ago, which is a small slice of my career. Yeah. In the testing community, like many communities, there is sometimes debate about names of things. <laughs> um so, I have a feeling I know what you're going to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, we shall see. So manual testing versus automated testing. Um, is automated testing testing or is it checking? Yeah, that's where my mind was going. <laughs> uh, and then there's, there's the kind of blurry bit in the middle of software development engineers in test, SDETs. You, know, you can have automation in testing rather than necessarily full automation of tests that kind of stuff i think those debates are valid and important but i think that it's sometimes easy to get hung up on the names mm -hmm. and lose sight of the issues behind the names that are actually probably the important thing yeah so it's stuff like status you know, testers do not have as much status as they should relative to programmers. Yeah. <laughs> That's wrong. You know, a good tester isn't the same as a failed programmer. Yeah, even though I've sadly met several people who go with, I couldn't make it as a developer, I'll go be a tester. I'm like, it's not a fallback career. <laughs> exactly. It's like people who say dentists are failed doctors. You know, does a disservice to both groups. Yeah. So there's the status question and then the who has what skills, who has what interests, who has to do what at what point, uh, cost effectiveness. Now, all these are really important questions that are sometimes hidden, sometimes hidden behind the debate over names. Yeah. A cost effective way of doing testing might be to do risk based testing, having someone crank out loads of test cases in a big Excel spreadsheet and then it's slavishly followed. That is a manual tester, but they are being not much different from an automated test. In fact, <laughs> they, it's kind of the worst of both worlds. And I've been there. I've been the person yeah. who had to write this stuff in Excel, potentially because I had to write it to then pass to a contractor we had to then automate it. So I was doing very slow automation. It just hadn't been recorded for them to then go, okay, do this. I, I made it happen. Very painfully typed out my and then pass it on. So yes, I've literally been in that situation. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. 
one thing you mentioned is like you started finding out about the ministry of testing the mot community and you haven't just consumed content from them you've actually created it haven't you uh, yes um which was i don't know who's more surprised me or the mot community <laughs> that I, I did this um very kind of uh the MOT bigwigs uh, to allow me to run a workshop um, on technical writing. Um, and it's one of my many hobby, hobby horses. And I have to be careful I don't bore people's ears off. I think it comes from the fact that my dad was in quality assurance for the raw materials going into a fairly big factory. Mm -hmm. And as part of that, he had to write the specification of those raw materials. Um, so if you got it wrong, you could have hundreds of thousands of pounds worth of the wrong stuff being delivered. Yeah. Or I thought you were testing such and such a thing. No, no, I thought you were testing it. That, you know, you have extra work to do to check it's OK before you work on it. Yeah. And so he had it, he drummed it into me. I think, you know, many people who are fortunate to have a good relationship with their parents growing up stuff rubs off from your parents onto you and technical writing is that for me it has to be clear concise complete and unambiguous but what i've one of the reasons why i was surprised by giving this workshop for mot is i don't have an english degree i'm not a journalist um <laughs> all these things that might make me a suitable candidate but I see it using my prejudices and biases. I see it as a user experience problem. And I approach the solution using engineering tools. Mm. So for me, a good bit of writing solves a problem for a person. Yeah. Like a good bit of software solves a problem for a person. So you can approach understanding the problem using the same user experience kinds of tools as you would for software. So a user story, understanding who the user is, what their problem is, all that good stuff. And then once you've got the problem at least roughly framed, the solution needs to be effective and it needs to be efficient. Standard engineering concerns. Yeah. So unlike what I'm doing now, you shouldn't ramble on at great length because that's <laughs> inefficient in terms of the reader's time. Throwing more words at the problem doesn't help because they get bored, switch off, and all that good stuff at the bottom doesn't get read. Hey, why is my view account, why is my watch time suddenly gone like this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And yet it still has to do the job. It has to be effective in those smaller number of words before they get bored. That bit has to be effective. So there's a tension. Uh, which is engineering through and through. You've got multiple constraints that are, you're you're trying to somehow reconcile. Mm. And like you you talked about how like you haven't got an English degree, you're not a journalist, but you've got experience, and that's that's the important bit. Is you're not talking about something from a theoretical point of sense of I've read this in a book, but I can then write it out really well. It is I've been doing this. Let me tell you how I've done it what i've seen what hasn't hasn't worked and that's that's the key thing and that's the nice thing about moc is it what people who have done stuff like i don't have a cs degree i've done workshops on sql <laughs> this has been a very enjoyable conversation and i hope that our watchers have enjoyed this so bob where can people find you i'm on twitter uh bob tech thoughts uh and i blog uh randomtechthoughts.blog This has been Testing Tales. I am Lead Pirate Tester and I've been thankful to have Bob Salmon on today. So if you have any thoughts on today's videos, please comment below. If you have questions for Bob, reach out to him on Twitter or via his blog. And look forward to seeing everyone again soon.